Hey, welcome. So today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We are gonna geek out, but I'm gonna keep this aimed at both audiences. So if you're familiar with NAS, if you're familiar with RAID arrays, you'll understand what's going on. And I'm gonna walk you through how I switched my backup from essentially a standalone RAID where I had to go over Thunderbolt 3 to what we're switching to today, which is a Synology NAS drive. Now we're still gonna be using RAID, but I'm gonna to have to go from RAID 1, either to, I haven't decided yet, RAID 5 or we're gonna to go to probably Synology Hybrid RAID, which allows me to get different drive sizes and mix and match, but still have that RAID redundancy that we need. So that being said, let's take a step back and talk about first what we're doing, as well as we've gotta go buy some drives, so we'll take you along in that process. So starting off, I had a 12 terabyte drive here, but it is RAID, so what we did is, actually before we get into that, let's explain RAID for a bit, and then we'll come back and explain what we're doing here. All right, so there's really two main reasons why you're gonna use RAID, and that's for redundancy or for speed increases. So by using multiple drives, you can span the data across them and you can get performance boosts. As well, you can have a single disk or sometimes multiple disks even fail. So that way, if you have really important data, in my case, videos and photos, I don't lose them. All right, so what does RAID stand for? Redundant array of inexpensive disks. So with RAID 0, what this is really gonna do is just give you a performance boost. However, the problem is if any of these fail, you're gonna lose the entire array. So in this example, RAID 0, if we have four one terabyte disks, I get one, two, three, and four usable terabytes as we scale the system. But let's say the third drive here fails, the entire array is gone and I could lose all my data potentially unless I'm able to recover that specific disk somehow. So it's a high risk, but it does allow you to have multiple disks used in a very speed efficient manner. What it does is spreads the data across all four disks. So if I need to read from them, I can almost aggregate the read speeds of all these disks or write speeds of all these disks. So that way I get a little bit more performance boost over one disk. The other benefit here is that I can have one logical volume across all four disks. So I don't have to manage all my files on four separate disks. On the computer, it's actually just gonna look like one disk. RAID 1 is where we start to get into some protection. So this is what I was using on my G drive. It actually doesn't have any type of compatibility with one disk. As soon as you get to two disks, you're gonna get one usable terabyte. And what this does is mirrors each disk. So my first disk is now an exact replica here. If this one fails, I still have a backup over here. This, however, doesn't scale too well, at least in an efficiency manner. All I ever get is the first disk mirrored across all the additional disks. So it does give me fail safe. If I have very, very important data, I could have it mirrored onto four disks, but it doesn't make the most sense in most scenarios. RAID 5 is where it gets interesting. So with even disk amounts, one terabyte disks, again, it's not gonna work here. It's gonna give me one, two, and then three. So ultimately what this does is introduces fault tolerance of one disk. Meaning at any given point, let's say again, disk three here fails, I still can recover the data. I just have to replace that broken disk. So it is very usable. You get performance boosts because you're using three disks. As well, I can still have one disk fail. So with Synology Hybrid RAID is where it really gets interesting because if we introduce two two terabyte disks at the last end, I'm only gonna get the same amount of usable storage here with RAID 5. It's not gonna increase it, and each of these disks is only gonna have one usable terabyte. However, I can use one disk with Synology Hybrid RAID. It's gonna get mirrored here as soon as I introduce two disks. When I introduce the third, it's only gonna grab one usable terabyte. However, when I now replicate or add another two terabyte drive, it's gonna jump to four. This is because ultimately it's gonna have any of these drives being able to fail at one given time and it's gonna take your maximum storage amount. So it's able to span across multiple disks. The way I understand this works is it basically breaks all your data into one terabyte chunks and splits them evenly. All right, so now that you guys know what RAID is, what we're gonna do is go get some drives to swap all this info over to so that way we can reformat these to the Synology hybrid RAID we were discussing. So with that said, let's go get some drives. I'll see you guys out there. All right, we arrived. Yay! Uh, let's go get some drives. I'll see you outside.
Had a quick stop for lunch too, we got some sweet green. Favorite time, time to get some Naz. Don't look at my password. Let me explain, but first, let's get the drive set up. All right, plop that bad boy there. So we got our drive. Let me explain the red light. So what happened was, as I'm setting this all up, I realized I might be able to completely remove the need for this drive because these are hot swappable drives. So what I could do, take one drive out, we could format it, and then essentially throw it onto the NAS device, reformat it as the new Synology Hybrid RAID, uh, copy everything over, over the network, get it set up with which is just one disc, and then when I plug in the second disc, I can overwrite it and erase it. So in theory, you don't need an external drive. However, what I realized is during that whole process, if anything goes wrong, if this drive goes bad, if the copy fails and I thought it was copied correctly, at some point I'm going to essentially be wiping both discs. And if either of them goes bad or the process, I lose all my files, all my photos, all my videos that I've been taking since I got into photography. So I'm still going to open this. I'm going to use this as just another failsafe backup, copy all the files over to here. That way, if anything goes bad with this process, I have a backup. All right, so right now we're copying everything from the G drive disc over to the Lacey disc we got. So just as a backup, and then I'm also getting the NAS hooked up right now. So that'll be up shortly. I'm gonna do it on my desk here, but I'm actually running a Cat5 cable over to the router. It's gonna be plugged in directly to the router. These don't have Wi-Fi, just to be aware of. Um, you could probably get cards for some, but for these types of storage, you really wanna hardwire them just so you get the fastest possible connection. So let's do that and I'll see you guys later. All right, so we've got it on the network. I can see it, as you can see on the screen here, on my router, um, but for whatever reason, the app itself, Synology Assistant, is not recognizing or finding the device. So I guess the plug and play solution didn't work. So at this point, I'm gonna look at some docs online, figure out why it won't find it. Um, automatically, I may try entering the IP address manually. All right, so after looking at the docs online, I was using the desktop client. There's also a web client. I entered the IP and now I'm able to find the web client successfully. Uh, it is giving me the message, which I was aware of. There's no disks in it right now, but I figured it would start, uh, let me set up the OS or at least connect to it. So for whatever reason, if you have no disks in it, it looks like you're not gonna be able to even see it unless you use the web assistant. I think I'm probably gonna use the web assistant anyway now that I know about it. Um, so let's go ahead and get some drives in here and set it up. Oh, hey, good morning. So, uh, <laughs> still trying to transfer files. We're here the next day. Um, for whatever reason, in my photos repository, something didn't copy over right last night. So as soon as we get that resolved, I'm doing them again one by one. Should be another half hour or so. Um, and then I'm gonna kick off the full backup setup of the NAS storage. Whew. All right, so everything is now failsafe backed up on the LaCie drive. What we're gonna do is push everything now from the G drive over to our NAS, but we have to go through the initial setup and wipe the drive on here. So we have two fail safes right now if anything goes wrong so i shouldn't lose all my data however i also need to change and get showered for the day so let's do that real quick ready all right so let's go ahead and dive in we're gonna wipe this drive and start the transfer right now see you on the computer all right so a few things to note during setup if you'll notice i skipped the steps where it actually asked me if i want to have the device searchable through their account or their means um i already have my Wi-Fi set up so I can access it remotely. I can VPN in to my home network anytime I need. So I'll be able to access this and I have it through proprietary means, which I'm comfortable with. Honestly, I'd like to avoid these types of things because it just opens yourself to a bigger surface of attack from potential people that could be sniffing Synology site, trying to access your system. So you wanna have as many doors into your home network 
uh, essentially closed as possible and this felt like an unnecessary one so i skipped it however if you don't have vpn set up if you don't have a way to remotely access your home network that could be a good thing for you to use potentially if you want to get to this anywhere in the world anywhere you have internet connection so I skipped it, that's because I already have something that I can use to access this remotely. But if you need that functionality, it is available through them. At this point, we're on basically the splash screen. Uh, I walked us through the quick tutorial. I'm gonna start copying the files over at this point and then we should be ready to roll. I'm gonna throw the other drive in, we'll format that once everything's copied over. All right, so all my data has been transferred. 4.5 terabytes actually took almost 12 hours to copy everything over. I've thrown the second drive in here. Right now, it's actually building that redundant array. So it is taking some time to do that, but I'm letting it run in the background. I found the performance on here is not as great as I expected. I was seeing maybe 50 megabytes per second transfer speeds. I would have hoped something a little bit faster. However, I'm using this for long-term storage. What that tells me is I don't recommend this for any type of editing workflows if you wanna edit directly from this drive, unless you're gonna put maybe SSDs or something a little bit faster. I'm also hoping as I put more drives in here, it'll become faster over time because it'll spread them across and be able to aggregate those read and write speeds. However, definitely good for long-term storage, which is what I'm using this for. I've got the additional 12 terabyte drives coming in the following weeks. They're on back order right now. You'll notice on top of this guy, I have the Osmo Action and Osmo Pocket. I wanna do a head-to-head -head with these. I just got this guy that came in today. So stay tuned. If you guys haven't subscribed already, definitely consider it. If you have any questions on today's video, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.